Hello, my name is Barry McCleary. Over the coming months, Megasum will be producing training videos for a number of our methods. I hope that you find these videos are useful. The beta amylase beta mal 3 reagent contains paranitrophenol beta multitriacide in the presence of beta glucosidase. The substrate is not hydrolyzed by this enzyme until beta amylase cleaves the maltose unit. As soon as this is released, the beta glucosidase can immediately release the beta linked glucose, which releases paranitrophenol into solution. When the reaction is stopped by adding an alkaline solution such as trismabase, the yellow phenylate colour is developed. The beta mile 3 kit as received should contain an instructions booklet, two vials of substrate containing paranitrophenol beta multitriacide plus beta glucosidase, a vial of trishcl buffer, a vial of mess buffer, a container of cysteine hydrochloride and a container with malt flour uh, control standardised to a particular beta amylase activity. Dissolve the contents of one of the vials of beta mal 3 reagent with 10 ml of boiled and cooled distilled water. This water is prepared by microwaving until the water is boiling and then cooling this on ice to around about room temperature. This will inactivate any enzymes likely to be present in the water. Cap the vial and mix well to ensure that all of the substrate is dissolved. Just check visually to ensure that this is the case and then transfer this solution into two polypropylene containers and these will be stored at minus 20 degrees centigrade between use and on ice during use. This ensures maximum stability of the reagent. Prepare trishydrochloride extraction buffer by adding 2.5 ml of concentrated buffer to distilled water and making up to 50 ml. This solution is then transferred to a 100 ml Duran bottle and immediately before use 0.88 grams of cysteine hydrochloride is added and dissolved. This solution must be used within a few hours of preparation. Swirl well to make sure that all the cysteine hydrochloride does actually dissolve. Prepare the mess dilution buffer by adding the entire contents of container 3 to a measuring cylinder and adjusting the volume to 500 ml. This is transferred to a 500 ml Duran bottle and is stable at 4 degrees centigrade for approximately one year. Grain or malt samples are milled to pass a 0.5 mm screen using a Frisch or Resch centrifugal mill. After milling, the mill lid is removed. And the sample is transferred from the collection tray to a plastic bag. This is then transferred to a plastic storage container for convenience.
accurately weigh exactly 0.5 grams of flour sample into a 13 mil polypropylene tube. After weighing, tap the tubes to make sure all the sample falls to the bottom of the tube. To 0.5 grams of flour or milled malt sample in 13 mil polypropylene tubes, add 5 mils of extraction buffer. Cap the tubes tightly and stir the contents vigorously on a vortex mixer. Allow the enzyme to extract over a one hour period at room temperature with frequent vigorous stirring on a vortex mixer. Do this approximately five times over the one hour period. Alternatively, the tubes can be placed in a Stuart blood tube rotator and allowed to rotate over the one hour period. After one hour, turn off the rotator and remove the tubes. and filter this solution through glass fibre filter paper. Remove the filter funnels. And then transfer 0.2 mil of the filtrate to 4 mil of dilution buffer. And mix this thoroughly. And this solution will be used in the assay. Dispense 0.2 mL of substrate solution into 13 mL glass test tubes or polypropylene tubes, having two tubes for each of the samples to be analysed, and also two tubes for blanks. Put excess reagent back into the reagent tube, cap and store this on ice. Place all the rack of tubes in the water bath at 40 degrees centigrade, as well as the enzyme extracts, to allow all of them to pre-equilibrate over a five minute period. Initiate the reaction by adding 0.2 mL of diluted malt or barley extract to the substrate solution, pre-equilibrated. Be careful to add this to the bottom of the test tube so that all of the enzyme preparation comes in contact with the substrate. Each sample is assayed in duplicate. And these reactions are allowed to proceed for exactly 10 minutes before termination of the reaction. At the end of the 10 minute incubation period, add three mils of stopping reagent and stir the tube contents vigorously.
Blanks are prepared by adding 3 mL of stopping reagent, 2.2 mL of the substrate solution, and this then is followed by 0.2 mL of the enzyme extract. With this sequence of additions, no reaction will occur. Addition of the alkaline stopping reagent both stops the reaction and develops the phenolate colour. You can see the colour in the tubes here for sample 1, sample 2 and for the blank. Only one sample blank needs to be performed for each set of determinations. These colours are measured at 400 nanometers. Having performed the assay and measured the absorbance values, the activity of beta amylase can be calculated using the equations on page 6 of the beta amylase beta mol 3 booklet as shown. Basically, uh, the absorbance value is multiplied by a factor of 19.72 if the flower is extracted as per the method. Alternatively, one can use the mega calc calculation device which is downloadable from the Megazum website. The mega calc calculation device is downloaded from the Megazum website at the point where the product is listed. The device looks as shown here. The second page of the calculation device explains what the different parameters mean uh, and gives an insight into how the calculations are performed. In using the calculation device, the first thing is to enter the sample details. Then the absorbance values for the reaction blanks are entered, as shown. Next, the sample identifier for the individual samples being analysed is included followed by the absorbance values in duplicate for each of those samples. The calculation device automatically takes an average. On the assumption that the method is followed as written in the booklet, the sample volume will be 0.2 mL, so it's not changed, but it can be changed if a smaller volume or a larger volume is used in the assay. The total volume in the assay tube is uh, 3.4 mils according to the method, so that won't be changed unless the method's changed. Incubation time is 10 minutes. Dilution is uh, usually 20 fold, but again, that can be changed if it's changed in the method. This will then calculate beta amylase, beta amylase activity in units per litre. And when the sample weight is entered the, uh, and extract volume in mils, beta amylase in units per gram is calculated. If the level of alpha amylase is to be assayed in the same extract using the Seralpha method, proceed as follows. Add 0.2 mL of the diluted morphal barley extract as used in the beta mol 3 assay as described already to 3 mL of Seralpha buffer A prepared as shown on page 3 of the Seralpha booklet. Proceed with the assay of alpha amylase as per page 7 of this booklet.